Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Byrne. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program at this time to bring you this very special news report. Live from CHT Television Network News, Channel 13, it's the Afternoon Edition with Joel Denaya, live from Channel 13 News Headquarters. Welcome to the Afternoon Edition of our 420 News Special here at Channel 13 News. I'm news anchor Joel De Silva. This afternoon, in a shocking move to many of the professors at the University of Virginia, Dr. Joseph Raphael Nuremberg, whose early, early research is what founded the autoimmune system deficiencies within the brain and how to treat them and aided many, many physicians later in how to diagnose people with serious illness and diseases that were uh, very difficult to diagnose in the past. His, his research aided doctors tremendously and were able to help them uh, bring about more effective treatments and, and diagnosis to patients who were suffering with serious illnesses. His later research also included the fact that he was the one that, that determined that the tetrahydrocannabinol molecule of the marijuana plant, or like the cannabis plant, is, has specific receptor sites in the brain. He also noted that these specific re receptor sites were limited in number, and that is why nobody could ever die or overdose from the cannabis plant or use of the cannabis herb. Dr. Nuremberg was led from his home in Halifax, Virginia today and uh, presumably off to uh, Leavenworth, Cam Kansas, the federal prison there, uh, to be executed for his this research and his work. Uh, comments from drug enforcement agency officials were, they declined, but Attorney General Eric Holder did say that although these measures were extreme, in order for the government to carry out its total eradication of the cannabis plant and, and a non-tolerance uh, program and policy, this is the types of measures that have to take place. Holder went on to say that he realized that millions of people's lives that were saved by Dr. Holder's early research, but the fact that he came up with research that goes against what the Drug Enforcement Agency has been peddling for 40 years, and, and it goes completely against what they say about cannabis and all that, uh, he had to be put to death. And that's why he was carried off to the uh, federal prison there in Leavenworth, Kansas to be executed. The first persons to be executed in the state of Texas were pronounced dead today at the famous Walls unit there in Huntsville, Texas. Uh, these two individuals became the first, in, first ones to die under the new federal laws, which uh, have a no tolerance policy for cannabis. We go to our Texas criminal law reporter there down in Huntsville right now, standing outside of the Walls unit, Miss Carletta UN. And uh, looks like quite a mess there, Carletta. That's right, Joel. Both of these men become the first in Texas to be executed under the new no-tolerance federal cannabis laws. As the video shows, the prisoner on the right is Carrie Burns, former host of the now-banned internet show The Cannabis Corner. He was arrested last week under the propaganda phase of new laws for knowingly and willingly posting videos to YouTube. He was a college graduate and a father of four. The prisoner on the left is Dan Brewster, also a college graduate arrested last week for smoking a dangerous marijuana cigarette with an undercover federal cannabis agent. Both men were transferred here to death row four days ago. These next few scenes in the video may be sensitive to some viewers. Both men traded their last meal, normally given to dead men walking, for a last joint between them. This option made available under the new laws. Both men had chosen public stoning for their method of execution, but after the brutal public stoning death last week of Casper Leach of Time for Hemp, this method has been banned. As you can see, it is quite brutal. This is Carletta Ewan reporting live, Channel 13 News. Back to you, Joel. And that was Carletta Ewan filing that report there from the Walls unit there down in Texas. Uh, thank you for that report, Carletta. Carletta, I had spoken with Casper Leach's family last week, and they said that although Casper had chosen the uh, execution by public stoning, they say that the type of public stoning that he had in mind was certainly nothing like what the brutal execution that was carried out. He honestly believed that they were going to be able to bring out a, a pipe big enough to put the 1,525 pounds of cannabis in one bowl for one puff that would, it would have taken to end his life. Of course, the public stoning that the federal government had in mind was much different than what Casper had envisioned and uh, we send out our condolences to the family in that regard. 
Monsanto stock skyrocketed this week amidst uh, rumors that they had been awarded the nearly $1 trillion contract from the United States government to spray the uh, cannabis fields down in Mexico and uh, Jamaica and certain other parts of Central America. Also on the uh, hit list for spraying are the uh, hash fields in Afghanistan and the Baalbek hash fields in northern India and certain places around Africa near Morocco and stuff where, where cannabis resin is now being produced. This, uh, like we said, this contract is worth nearly a trillion dollars. And uh, j just as a show of what this can do to a company, the uh, stock for Monsanto jumped $10 a share after the, the uh, contract was awarded earlier today. Of course, they have a huge lobby in Washington, D.C. that helped bring, about, bring this about. And uh, it, it's just a great day for Monsanto. They're going, they have been awarded the contract to spray the Paraquat in Mexico, Jamaica, certain parts of Central America and Southern South America, Afghanistan, and near the Moroccan area where the Moroccan hashish is being produced. Biofuel that has been made from all of the seized cannabis along the Mexican border now runs every piece of government equipment in the United States, including all military aircraft, all government tanks, uh, any types of uh, vehicles that the, the uh, the uh, Washington diplomats use, all of those, Air Force One. Uh, all of this is being made from uh, the, uh, a form of diesel called hemp fuel, which is uh, not new. It's uh, something that was done way back when, when hemp was uh, legal in this country. But uh, one thing about it, this saves taxpayers around $10 billion annually, which is what we normally spend on just fuel to keep all of the, the uh, government uh, vehicles running, planes, trains, you name it. And uh, one good thing about this too, the, uh, there's a surplus of fuel which has been allowed, been used to generate all of the electricity for all of the uh, narcotic seizure points along the border, including all the checkpoints at all the various border crossings. And also this, uh, this excess electricity that was left over from that was being sold to the public which uh, brought in an additional $300 million uh, for the uh, narcotic seizure program there along the border. Uh, this is a boon for the uh, taxpayer. Like we said, this saves $10 billion and uh, there, it's a simple process to make this fuel. And uh, so hip hip hooray for the uh, DEA and the Homeland Security and all of those people for uh, saving taxpayer dollars. The spy and snitch program on your neighbor that has been set up by the federal government to help aid law enforcement in, in their total eradication for cannabis program has now reached new heights and are graduating another 1,200 recipients last night at the local Civic Center. We now go to, uh, to Channel 13's field reporter, Mr. Johnny Riff, who files this report. That's right, Joel. 1,200 new recipients of the SNS certificate were awarded last night in a ceremony held at the Civic Center. During this uh, six-week program, all the recipients, they were trained in how to, to uh, of course, spy on their neighbors. They were, they were trained in surveillance techniques, stuff like that. And uh, their pets were uh, given up to be trained as cannabis-sniffing dogs so they could be used to, uh, to spy on their neighbors and also to find out if they had cannabis in their homes and all. And uh, a lot of the people, they were taught how to uh, sneak up on their neighbors and to take a clipping of their hair so it could be drug tested to see if they were using cannabis and all these. All of these techniques were taught in this uh, six-week class. Uh, as you know, this is a federally funded program, the Spy and Snitch on Your Neighbor program. And uh, the program was set up initially to uh, aid law enforcement to uh, carry out and bring about the uh, no tolerance policy that has now been adopted for cannabis. Uh, so uh, it allows this, our local good citizens to uh, participate in this program. And uh, they, everyone that they break into their home, and if they find cannabis and all, uh, they're awarded $1,000 for this. So it's a money incentive for stay at home moms that uh, like to pick up a little extra income, maybe for some groceries or some booze or cigarettes or something like that, but it gives them a chance to uh, earn a little extra money and, and uh, spy on the neighbors and make sure that uh, none of that dangerous narcotic cannabis is uh, in their neighborhoods and around their children. And uh, so this is a really good program. And like I say, we uh, have 1,200 new recipients from the graduation last night. 
and uh, it was a really gala event. The local police were there. They gave uh, a little bit of a few speeches and uh, uh, acknowledged certain citizens within the, na the neighborhoods that had already turned in cannabis people, some with possession. Of course, they were taken to uh, death row and executed. And, uh, but uh, this is a fantastic program, fairly funded, it's free. And uh, local law enforcement, they encourage everybody out there to uh, get active and, and help law enforcement rid the neighborhoods of this dangerous cannabis narcotic. Joel, back to you. This is uh, Johnny Raff reporting for Channel 13 News. Thank you for that report, Johnny. Quite the story there. And I understand that all of the recipients who receive their certificates also have to turn in their pets to be trained as dr drug sniffing dogs. And these can help aid them in their, in their local neighborhoods to, to pick out and determine which one of the neighbors are possessing cannabis. Of course, as Johnny said in his report, all of those that are turned in, each recipient receives $1,000. So this is an excellent way for the stay at home moms to make extra money, as Johnny said and to uh, help, help the federal government and local law enforcement er eradicate this dangerous narcotic cannabis substance from our neighborhoods and our children. Drug enforcement agency officials in Washington State, Oregon, California, Rhode Island, Minnesota, Utah, and several of the other states that used to allow medical marijuana have now reported that all of the medicinal dispensaries that used to sell legal cannabis by prescription to its patients have all finally been dis destroyed and bulldozed. Not one bit of, the, uh, of these properties are left standing according to Drug Enforcement Agency Director, Mr. Bill Dick Pendick. <clears throat> Mr. Pendick said that although this was quite an undertaking to destroy and remove all the debris from these establishments, he felt 100% felt for sure that none of the cannabis was left behind and certainly any, any memories or anything of this type of activity has certainly been wiped out. This follows the uh, bombing last week and almost complete annihilation of Amsterdam and parts of Switzerland undertaken by the United States military because of the uh, cannabis laws that used to be in place there in Amsterdam. The uh, federal government thought it was necessary to do an all-out bombing and complete eradication of the city just to make sure that there weren't any cannabis plants or any type of cannabis activity left behind. It was, you know, we gave the residents there plenty of time to evacuate. If there were any left, when we got there to drop the bombs, we're sorry, but these measures had to be done. This is coming from the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff there from the uh, Pentagon. Uh, it's a sad day there across the country, but... Uh, you know, this complete eradication program, that's what's going on. And people in Portugal and Spain, you better look out. You might be on the target list next. Department of Justice Bureau of Prisons officials announced today the early release of 300,000 inmates to make room for the onslaught of the uh, cannabis users that are being rounded up around the United States for execution. We need the room for these prisoners. And so what the uh, Bureau of Prisons did, they went through and... Uh, they started with the most hardcore criminals, the murderers, the rapists, the thieves, the home burglars, all of those, child molesters, and the ones that had the longest sentences. And these were the ones that were, that were uh, targeted for early release. Uh, the, the conditions were changed in their, in their sentences so that they were allowed early release to make room for these cannabis prisoners. Uh, the Department of Justice said these moves are drastic, but they feel like that these prisoners, even though they weren't going to see the light of day again, that this move was necessary to make room for the criminal justice system's onslaught of some 500,000 people that are expected to come into the prisons every week until every last cannabis user in the United States has been rounded up. Uh, this, is this is kind of scary to some neighborhoods and all, particularly the child molesters and the, uh, the sex offenders, but the, uh, the Department of Justice officials reported that at least we will not have these dangerous narcotic cannabis users on the street. What's being called as a tri-factor department in Washington, D.C. move today, the Federal Food and Drug Administration, along with the Drug Enforcement Agency through Homeland Security and the Department of Homeland Security and the Health and Human Services have removed 
oxycodone, hydrocodone, oxycont, methadone, Xanax, Valium, Somas, and Lortabs, all from Controlled Substance Act. These, these, prescript, these once prescription drugs are now available over the counter. Uh, Drug Enforcement Agency officials reported that the use of these substances had gone so to such extremes that eradication and enforcement was lo no longer effective. So by removing these from controlled substances and all, we now can take these resources that were being spent to, to chase these cases down, and we can now use these money, the resources from these and these agents to help eradicate the cannabis along the border and in other places of the world where it, where it is still haven't, hasn't been eradicated totally. Uh, that's quite a sh shocker, but uh, this was a move that uh, apparently had to be done. The Department of Justice defends if holy. Breweries and liquor stores all across America celebrated the 78th anniversary of the end of Prohibition, which came about under Roosevelt's uh, FDR's term. This also marks the 10th anniversary of the Thank God Prohibition is Over party that is hosted every year in Washington, D.C. by the uh, Senate and House Chamber members. Uh, last year's event, which uh, in, you know, included a lot of uh, binge drinking, and of course parties all over Washington, D.C. of people drinking and celebrating in the streets, the fact that Prohibition had been gone for 78 years and they were allowed to do as they want and express their own freedom and rights to enjoy liquor. Uh, even some of the senators who were stumbling down the, uh, the uh, doorways there as we tried to come into one of the parties, they said that, uh, that this was a great day for America and that uh, all those 1,600 people had died from binge drinking over the weekend celebrating this party, uh, it was still less than the 1,750 that had died last year. So it was some improvement, he said, but uh, uh, sadly enough, though, the... Uh, this date also marked the 75th anniversary of the uh, passage of the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act, which uh, made cannabis illegal in this country. And uh, during that 75 years, nobody had died from the effects of cannabis. Congress has just finalized details on funding another $100 billion toward Homeland Security's eradication of cannabis along the border. They now have adopted a shoot now and ask questions later policy in which any suspected cannabis smuggler that they see coming across the border or in South Texas or walking in any part of the Southern Texas, if they look suspicious, agents have permission from Drug Enforcement Agency and Homeland Security to shoot and kill these individuals. This is a drastic measure for sure, but one thing the agent said that since this has occurred that over 60,000 suspected cannabis smugglers from the border have been shot and killed. And this has put a tremendous dent in the $30 billion a year uh, cartel business that is coming across the border bringing cannabis into the United States of America. I know the $100 billion is excessive, said the one congressman but, uh, from Texas, but this is a necessary move because we must keep this cannabis, this dangerous narcotic, from reaching their schools and our children there here in the United States. A Boy Scout trip in the Big Bend was canceled early when uh, 250 suspected uh, backpackers along Santa Lina Canyon were uh, jumped by federal agents, drug enforcement, Homeland Security and all that were sitting up above the rim of Santa Lina Canyon and they fired down upon them killing 249 of the 250 backpackers that were take, taking a hike through the uh, canyon. Uh, no word yet from drug enforcement agencies if these were suspected cannabis smugglers or, or, and also we have had not any comment from the Boy Scouts of America on the uh, results of that trip and the fact that it had to come to an early end. This brings an end to our afternoon 420 edition. I'm Joel Denaya, and I sure appreciate you joining us. And now we return you to your regularly scheduled programming. And I thank you for spending time in the Cannabis Corner.